INFJs are in high demand, and yet they are often ignored by those that demand them so much. But, until these people that want the INFJ to manifest their true nature can see the INFJ as they are standing there in their shroud, the INFJ will stay concealed. They want to be discovered, but they expect you to do the footwork. You see, INFJs are the masterminds of blending in, thanks to their chameleon-like abilities. But what are they hiding beneath the surface? That's what we're here to uncover today. So let's start. INFJs are one of the hardest of all types. The reason for this is because of their ability to blend in with the environment they are in at any given time. This is achieved via their auxiliary function of phi, which is called their chameleon function. Typically, how this manifests is that an INFJ will be hard to notice. They are hard to see. You could be talking with one and have no idea that you are talking to a person of this type. Because of their chameleon quality, they will embody whatever their delicate gyroscope tells them to embody at any given time. INFJs have a tendency to balance out interactions, such that if the person they are talking to is too active, they will take a passive role. If the person they are talking to is too passive, they will take the active role. Like the tides, they constantly shift. Their personalities are difficult to peg down. They instinctively resist categorization, and so if they sense that they have been carrying on in one mode for too long, they will change it to something else. Now, this is all true as regards the INFJ's outer mode of presentation. You will have little idea that this person you are standing next to, and perhaps holding a conversation with, is one of the most awe-inspiring and creative geniuses you could perhaps chance to meet. You will not necessarily have an inkling of this until you have glimpsed the INFJ in their natural environment, where they rule supreme. Read some of their writings sometime if you have a chance, which you likely won't, as INFJs are pretty secretive. There is a place in every INFJ where they are so removed from this world and its petty miseries that what you are actually seeing in many of them is a husk of sorts. It is not their true self. Their true self is mostly discovered through their literary or artistic productions. When you get your hands on these, then you will be seeing the true person. And these are some inspired and burning spirits once you see past their ruse of being gently invisible. You see, INFJs don't want to be discovered, or at least they are highly ambivalent about it. They will tack and shift and throw you off the scent. They are saying, I dare you to discover me. They do this because they are very sensitive to being misunderstood. They cannot bear distorted meanings, which is why their works are often concealed from profane eyes and ears. Yes, the whole INFJ existence is bound up in hiding and concealing their true nature. They will reveal it at pivotal moments when they sense the timing and circumstances are right, but they may never reveal it as much as they would like to or as much as others would like them to. Once they get a taste of the true INFJ nature, many INFJs, whether they care to admit it or not, see themselves as special people. They know they are rare, and they know they have very unique things to offer. The thing is, they cannot often find a reason or a motivation for offering them. It is very frustrating to them, and it often takes an extreme crisis of one sort or another to get them past this inertia to manifest. They are instinctively nice people, and very much hate to have to hurt other people's feelings. However, they will do so if they feel it is the only way to preserve the true meaning of a situation. INFJs will not lie to themselves. They will lie to others if need be, but to them, that is all on the outer plane, which has no great significance to them. It is a matter of expediency and self-protection. They are protecting the self that they have been painstakingly building up since they were young. To them, the self is the most sacred thing imaginable. 
INFJs are extremely self-centered, though no one around them may have any idea of this unless they get into some kind of long-term relationship with them. INFJs present as if they were the most sensitive and understanding creatures on God's green earth, nodding in sympathy with you, making it all about you. You might feel, upon meeting one of these melancholic creatures, that you have never been so understood and soothed as you were upon talking to them. They make it all about you. They want to know everything about you. They seem so promising as people. Who is this angel from heaven? You might be thinking. But this is all pretext with an INFJ. It is not as if they are doing this to be calculating. In the moment, they are genuinely interested in you. And maybe even for quite a while, they will continue to be interested. But there is likely to come a day where all that changes and the INFJ has departed in spirit and left you with a well-meaning husk of themselves. INFJs seem like some of the most promising people to be in a relationship with. But in practice, and let me be very honest, they are the least able of all types to be in a long-term relationship. An INFJ is, in essence, a solo type person. Surface appearances will fool you, but that is the general truth about them, especially the men of this type. Why is that? Because an INFJ is usually married to their art or philosophy or whatever their ideal happens to be. They are married to their muse, which usually doesn't take physical form in the aspect of a flesh and blood person. If they decide that you are their muse, then God help you. You better grow wings and speak Angelese. INFJs are very unforgiving of faults in their lovers or spouses. They will make life a hell for their beloved, and yet it all began under the pretext of heaven. It is very hard for the INFJ to know how this came about. They had the best and most shining of intentions. But you are dealing with a hard-edged romantic here, and it is very difficult for people to live up to their ideal of a perfect relationship. What is more, it is very hard for INFJs to live up to their ideal of a perfect relationship, and they will pull all of hell down on themselves and their supposed beloved in self-punishment for their supposed sins. This is what generally happens over time for an INFJ in relationship. Now, if you want to have a fling with them, then they are like heaven's little children in this regard. They make great lovers in relationships, which last around three to six months. Oh, you will have so much fun with them if you keep it brief. INFJs are tortured in one way or another by their longing for the perfect relationship of soulmates and the alternating desire to be dedicated to an art or mission of some sort. In short, they are tortured by whether and when they will find their soulmate and their opposing desire to be monks in one form or another. If they find a person that is their soulmate, then they will go into monk mode and eventually alienate them. Once they have alienated this person, then they will switch out of monk mode and back into soulmate mode when their self-imposed cloister is too much for them to bear. If they were INTJs, this wouldn't be as much a problem. INTJs can be monks or isolated philosophers on remote mountaintops in a more or less perpetual fashion. But INFJs are people that need people in one way or another. They need people, yet they need solitude, and these alternate back and forth in a rather irritating fashion for them. Here is what INFJs need to do. Number one, realize that humans are imperfect. Realize that most people are flawed and very human in one way or another. INFJ women try to embody the angelic side in relationships, and the men try to seek the angel in other women. Here is a note to both of them. Angels have transcended human existence and for the most part, don't embody in human form. That just leaves you with flesh and blood creatures that go by the name of humans. So, INFJs need to realize that fact and treat relationships accordingly. Number two, express your creativity. Express your damn self. By this, I mean through writing, composing, painting, journaling, dancing. Share your artistic or literary works as a way to convey your thoughts and emotions indirectly. 
It provides insight into your inner world without exposing it directly. Number three, communicate preferences. Clearly express your need for space and time alone. Help others understand that occasional solitude is essential for your well-being. Number four, be open to the world. Have many relationships that are not soulmate ones. Network, come out of hiding. Stop waiting for the soulmate that you will trap and take into your secret lair. Number five, embracing authenticity. Dear INFJs, please stop acting like angels or aliens from another planet. Put away your promising eyes and embrace authenticity. Share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. If you find this video thought-provoking, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe for more mind-bending content. Thank <laughs> you.